Let me show you my jig here that I use for matching tennis rackets. This board right here is 20 inches long. It could be a little bit longer, but this is going to serve well for my purpose. And then I used a half inch dowel. If you go smaller than a half inch dowel, it's harder to get the racket to balance. If you go larger than a half inch dowel, it's too easy to get the racket to balance, so you don't end up with as accurate a reading. Now I've got these two strips right here centered so it'll hold this dowel up off of this board so that the dowel doesn't roll back and forth on the board and it always stays centered between those two uh, strips of wood. This strip right here is, this side right here is 25 centimeters from the center of this dowel. Then I've got a little metal ruler down here that's graduated in centimeters and also in inches. Then I can put my racket on here and check the balance, if I can get it to balance. And if I look at it, it says it's uh, 60, about 63 and a half, so I'm going to call it 64 uh, millimeters. This point right here is 250 millimeters, so I've got 314 millimeters, or it's probably closer to 313 millimeters, is the balance point on this racket. So I'm going to call it 313 millimeters. And then I'll also need to check the weight on the racket. I've got a jeweler scale here, and I'm just going to turn it on. It measures in one hundredths of a gram, and it'll go up to 500 grams, which is fine for what I need. And it says it's 311.22 uh, grams. So I'm just going to call that 311.2 grams. Another thing I've done here is uh, I wanted to check the inertia on these rackets and I wanted to get some uh, fidget spinners. And the reason I wanted the fidget spinners is because they usually have uh, weights or bearings in the end of it. This one's got bearings. You can see there's a hole in the center and they actually spin. And this one here has just got weights in the outside of it. Works just as well. This one right here used to have bearings in the outside of it until I took them out. It still spins fine, but it, because it doesn't have the weight here, it doesn't have the plow through to keep going around. And this one won't spin as long as that one will. And they started out, they're both the same bearings. This right here, you could probably get two of these take the center out of it, all you got to do is pop it off with a screwdriver, and there's a bearing inside there, but you will need two of these, where one of these is good for uh, one and a half bearings. I think the bearing on the inside is a different size than the bearing on the outside. But anyway, what I did with these bearings is I took some quarter inch corner molding, and this is what's going to fit up against my racket to support my racket like this when I try to oscillate it. And I drilled a 5 16 inch hole in the corner molding. Then I put my 5 16 inch dowel in there. And then that dowel fit, uh, didn't qu quite fit inside these bearings, so I put the dowel in a drill chuck and sanded it down to where it's fairly straight. Then I glued them so that these bearings don't move once I get them in there. Then on the other side of this balance board, I put two little strips of wood right here so that the bearings don't touch this board right here and they'll stay centered on, this, on these two strips of wood. I can put my racket in there and then rotate it and check the inertia of my tennis racket. So, let me show you how I go about doing this. 
I've got another strip of wood here. I don't know how long it is. I've got a micrometer so I can measure it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tennis racket and put this on my tennis racket. I'm going to take my board. Let me do it on this side so you can see what I'm doing better. I'm going to take my little board here and I'm going to use that as a spacer so that now this dowel is 10 centimeters from the butt of this racket right here. And I know that because I cut that spacer to the right length. Then I'm going to make sure I've got the uh, dowel perpendicular, and I do. And I'm going to hold it on there with a rubber band. I'll check it one more time real quick, just to make sure everything's fine, and that's good. So, checking to make sure my dowel's perpendicular again. And it's good. Now let me show you how I check the inertia. You can see here now that the racket itself is sort of twisted in towards this support that I put my board on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the back bearing. What's happening is the center of mass, which is somewhere over here, is trying to get immediately under the support up here. So as it does, the racket goes that way and touches this board over here. So I'm just going to push it down with my finger. Now you can see that I've got this on preview. This is a swing tool. And my racket is pretty much centered. I can push it. Oops! I pushed the racket. All I have to do is center my racket in the preview here so that I'm going to get a good measurement. Then when I'm done with that, well, I can go to setup and, and key in my parameters. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to key in my parameters. The first thing it's asking me for up here is the hang point. Where is it hanging from relative to the base of the tennis racket? Well, that's 10 centimeters. I've got that set in. Then it's saying, what is my balance point? Balance point on the racket is 313 millimeters, which is 31.3 centimeters. So I'm going to key that in, 31.3. Then it's asking me for the weight of the racket. That was 311.2. I'm just going to put 3112. I'm just going to, whoops, I've got too much in there because of the previous number. 3112. Then it's asking me for the swing point. My swing point is also 10 centimeters. That's uh, the point that you're using as a pivot to measure your swing weight. Once I've got all that in there, I click Done. Then I click Done again. And then I can start my racket rotating and see what I end up with. The last racket that I measured was 327.9 kilograms per centimeter. So what I'm going to do now is because I've been moving this around, I'm going to recenter my racket and then uh, measure the swing weight on it just to show you how it works. To get my racket moving, all I have to do is rock it back and forth and it'll continue swinging long enough to actually measure my swing weight. So I'm going to start all over again. I'm going to pull it out here and then just click Start. And you can see every time it recognizes that racket going by, it'll click uh, or step through that. And each two times it goes by is one period. And it's going to measure 16 periods.
Well, I think I've got something wrong. <laughs> Let me check my setup. I've got to uh, wait. Oh, for balance, I've got 3,112. That's not quite right. So I'm going to take all that out. I want 31.3. Uh, 31.3. Whoop, that's not the right number either. I see other numbers in there. 31.3. If you get any really, really weird uh, readings, that's usually what's happened. Now I'm going to start my rocket again. I'm holding it down so it's going pretty much straight down. Get my rocket started, and then just hit start. Again, you can see it's stepping through here. It gets one step each time the rocket passes, and each two passes is a period. And there's 16 periods it takes to measure my rocket. So it's telling me my rocket is 317.4 kilograms per centimeter, and that's for an unstrung racket. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, leave them down below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Have a nice day.